Leader Chris Hipkins has called for Winston Peters to be stood down as foreign minister for opening up the government to legal action for what Hipkins says was a totally accept unacceptable attack on a prominent AUKUS critic. Former Australian Foreign Minister Bob Carr has reportedly written to Peters informing him they intend to launch legal action. We understand Peters' office has just confirmed receiving that letter. We are not going to repeat the alleged defamatory remark here, but it was referenced in the House under parliamentary privilege yesterday. Education Minister Erica Stanley Stanford and Labor MP Willie Jackson join us. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Fiona. Um, Willie, do you agree with your leader that Winston Peters should be stood down as foreign minister? I'd be in trouble if I didn't, don't you think? But you're there. allowed to have your own opinion. <laughs> was, you might, you'd be in trouble with Winston <laughs> Peters if you agree with him. I was with uh, our leader when he made that comment. I thought it was a, a terrible comment uh, from Winston. Um, you know, it's unbelievable the way he operates and acts. Let's, let's be clear, I think we're all... We all looked at him when he was overseas, and there were some people who, who were very proud. I looked at him, I wasn't surprised. You know, he, he uh, performed so well on the foreign stage. He gets back and he acts like an insane man. I don't know what's wrong with him. He comes into the house and just goes crazy, yeah. and then he defames. Am I defaming him? I'm not quite sure. Well, <laughs> talk about defamatory comments. It I mean, does sound well, quite personal, no, actually. actually I'm on the show saying. doing well, this every week, well, mate. Well, it's not <laughs> personal, because on the same show, I've said he's a political phenomenon. And, uh, uh, and, oh, and I'll, and as I'll give him that. balanced. Oh, Oh, no, no, but the reality is you can't do that to this guy who's uh, given great service for, uh, in terms of Australian uh, politics, and he's, uh, he's gone too far, and these guys here aren't able to pull him up. The other side of this is... You know, we have got worldwide fame for the way we've operated our policy. You know, we're known for our peace. You know, we're known for our independence. We're not known for being in the in the laps of, of Washington or Beijing, you know. And I'm, I really support Helen Clark and others who said, hold on here. We value our independence. Stop selling us, stop selling us off at the drop of a hat, Winston. You know, I mean, David Parker grilled him in the house yesterday. But he's out of control at the moment, so of course I support our, um, our leader. Erica? He, she supports me too. She just doesn't want to say it. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Willie, you're on the show every week doing exactly the same thing to most politicians, so right. I'm not that's sure we should be have. listening to you. But look, however, I, look, I just want to say it's a rough and tumble of politics. It's what, the, you know, Christopher Luxon said yesterday, uh, and Winston Peters is doing a phenomenal job. I think he's probably been to more countries in the last few months than, than, than the previous uh, foreign minister did in her entire six years. But the, the key is, is that, look, these things, these things are said. Willie pretty much does it every week on the show. Uh, I don't think that, that the Prime Minister is too bothered about these comments. Winston Peters is certainly not too bothered. But uh, it's just the rough and tumble of politics. Look, rough look. and tumble is the term that um, Christopher Luxon was using yesterday. But doesn't this demonstrate that although um, the, the Prime Minister can rebuke his own MPs, uh, it's actually very difficult, even when he accepts that these are, this is not language he would use, it's very difficult to rebuke other people in the coalition government. And isn't that an issue? Oh, we have to work together. Uh, in any coalition government, and Willie will remember that from you know his time working with uh, we had, New Zealand. We had first. Winston under control. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just, that's why he's. he's <laughs> you just, really believe well, that? Well, as much as we could, but uh, you know we walked away from. It. But look, it's an embarrassment for this government. They can't they can't manage Winston. They can't manage David Seymour. Uh, Winston will do whatever he likes. Now he's uh, embarrassing us uh, internationally. Uh, against Bob Carr, a very respected former foreign minister. Were either of you in the House on Wednesday night? No. I wasn't in the House on Wednesday night, but when I, when someone relayed what happened to me, I was absolutely shocked. It was unbelievable. And that we're a Green Party, about that, that, yeah, that, well, it was unbelievable that a, a, a that I, you know, that that Julianne Genta would be crossing the floor on a transport issue. I thought, oh, my God, they're finally seeing the light. You know, <laughs> get rid of their dopey bus policy. Uh, but <laughs> actually, I was quickly corrected. Uh, but look, it's before parliamentary privileges at the moment, so there's not much that we can say. Um, look, other than to say that it's always interesting to note that the Greens can't even bring themselves to use the word whips for their party whips. They have to use the word musterer because they're very anti-violence and all about peace, <laughs> you know, and love. Uh, you know, and then we well, see this. Well, Willie, we'll yeah, they have had a string of issues with their MPs lately. Of course, there's um, Darling Tana, who's under investigation. We've had resignations from Elizabeth Kitty and Gauri's government and, you know, a shroud of controversy too. Is this all damaging for their party? Not according to the polls. I mean, they keep going up in the polls. I, I think... Uh 
the public recognise they're passionate people. Uh, very unfortunate what happened the other night. I mean, but there is precedent. Is uh, it okay to be? Is it okay not. to be passionate and and do what? Oh no, of course not. I think I think my, all the parties have said that, you know it's uh, unacceptable. But it's look. Uh, and, and she's going through a process. Let's not forget National got form on this too. Jamie, I don't know if you remember, but Jamie Lee Ross walked across the... Just because, he walked across the, just because hang, someone hang, else has done it doesn't mean it makes it well, okay well, this time. No, of course, it never makes it okay, but let's not pretend it hasn't happened before where we had Jamie Lee Ross walk across and threaten Adrian Rudafi and, and we all saw that when we... There was, a, I think, there was a New Zealand First MP. It might have been a Labour MP too, and they had a punch up out in the lobby. But uh, yeah, I mean, right. so there is history, but it's still unacceptable. And I think everybody's uh, made their view clear on this. And the Greens will go through, and Parliament will go through their process. Let's talk about education, um, Erica. The Union for Primary Teachers say a single approach doesn't work. That there are different learners. One size uh, fits all just doesn't work. What did you say there? We've done a lot of research on this over the last few years. This is not just something we decided and dreamed up in the last little while, and I've been to see many international experts as well. And the thing is, with structured literacy, it works for 90% of kids. There are a certain percentage of kids who'll learn to read no matter what. But when you've got them all in your class at five years old, you don't know which ones they are. So it's really important that we use uh, the most uh, evidence-based method of teaching our kids to read, and that is using that at its core, basically phonics, to decode words. Uh, because the alternative is we're teaching children to memorise thousands of words. They need a code to be able to, to decode words so that they can become proficient readers. So, look, I'd say to the unions, they're on the wrong side of this. And even Jan Tanetti, she was on this show not that long ago saying that, that this was the best results she'd ever seen and that she could only have dreamt of seeing <laughs> results like this when she was in the profession. So, well, Willie, know. she was actually on the programme this morning as well, saying that there were some um, programmes that have been being taught that are damaging for children. She was Education Minister. She had a chance to do something about that. How, how did your yeah. government allow that to continue? Well, well, you, well she, you have to ask her. She was Education Minister. Uh, but I think she, and, and I do too, recognise the principles of what, what the Minister is saying is that it's something that you can't um, in my view, anyway, you can't argue against, you know. Does one size fit all? Well, I, I don't think it does, but that doesn't mean to say, you know, and we've seen that. That's why you've had could a co-papa come in and, and, and lots of other areas. But but the principle about the minister, what the minister talks about, is hard to argue about. You could argue, though, that there's not enough investment in this area. You could argue that it was a drop in the bucket and they're, and they're, they're making cuts at frontline services, you know, and that some of these teachers are going to have to do this without teacher aids, and we've heard oh, that. Oh, no, you know, hold on, sorry, hey. and, well, oh, and, there, and there are cuts Talk everywhere. About defamatory so statements. So, so they, no one so is cutting. So they can bring in their is Nobody is cutting will there be, teacher aids. Will there be any cuts? It's like to... pre-election when you just made stuff up. And <laughs> will like, there be any cuts to, fly? to the on. reading the recovery program, program <laughs> though? Because reading recovery is they go in and they help learners that need that extra help. Yeah. But yeah. they have mostly been focused on balanced literacy. Yeah. So what is the point of well, them? The, if they're... Yeah, that's right. The key is if you're going to be rolling out structured literacy, you have to have <coughs> consistent approaches. And... Reading recovery, the, the basis of it, is based on whole words. So learn the whole word, look at the picture, guess the word. It's not, at its core, phonics and decoding words. And so it's important you have that consistent approach. So is that so going? So we will be getting rid of reading recovery using that same funding and more to uh, put that into what we call tier two and three interventions, which are small group and one-on-one -on -one for the very few kids that fall through the cracks. Now, can I say something? All of the schools that I go into... Uh, say that the number of kids who need remedial reading significantly drops. In fact, at uh, Central Normal School in Palmerston North, it dropped by two-thirds once they started using structured literacy. So we do expect to see a big drop, but we will keep that same funding in place. There are around 270 staff, though, uh, connected to the Reading Recovery Programme. Do they lose their jobs? Well, many of them may be able to retrain in structured literacy. And but there are teaching. job losses. There will about. be job That's losses. What I'm worried about. All of those people will be teachers, mm -hmm. um, so there will be opportunities for them and we will be investing in re that's what the announcement was yesterday investing in retraining people into structured literacy so that they can be used to to do those interventions okay. sounds like some of them might not though um, and just one more quick question there is an organization in the u.s actually that has trademarked the term structured literacy are we going to be paying them a fee to be able to use that term and to be able to teach structured literacy here in we new zealand we are using structured literacy approaches
Okay, so we're being quite careful about the wording that we're using careful because about of that trademark. Yeah, well, look, we're not. The thing I've been saying is we're not going to be purist about this because if we are, we're going to get ourselves into all sorts of trouble because you know, perfect is the enemy of great, and we have great. We've got a number of different providers that are so using be structured a range. literacy approaches. There will be a range of different providers that will be accrediting. Many are already on a panel that we use. Uh, Better Start Literacy, who are out of Canterbury University, um, will do a lot of the training. They're excellent. The results are just phenomenal though and this is can I just say this is a game changer especially for our tamariki Māori they are seeing the biggest gains and shift in reading uh, using structured literacy I mean it is a also I mean today is today Māori is a phonics based language yeah. as well so I it's just such a great program I'm really excited there are many people who um, would find it hard to argue that it's 19 past seven thank you very much for your time Education Minister Erica Stanford and Labour MP Willie Jackson